So we are going to jump right into our next demonstration video for invoice capture. So this one is fun because this one probably happens more than you think. The vendor, and here is the vendor e email, has sent in invoice number 25. But if you look at the invoice and app, your AP team wouldn't look at the invoice. I'm just showing this to you. There's no PO number. So the invoices are going to come in and the vendor is going to send these invoices. So let me go ahead and just send this. Now, I'm not even going to use the web browser for invoice capture. I like using everything embedded within D365. So I'm going to go into D365. Now, notice I don't have any pending vendor invoices. So I want to show you that now because we're going to see here in a moment that everything kind of flows into the system automatically. So if you've been with me on my last uh, video, you know that you have received files, which is basically when the vendor sends the invoices or when they're imported manually, then that's where they'll come here to received files where the systems um, AI builder, OCR reader will read the invoice and send it into captured. Um, so there it is waiting and we should see it here process pretty quickly into captured invoices. While that's running, I always like to go ahead and set up our process automations because there are a couple automations that run every hour and a couple that run every 10 minutes. And so for this demonstration, I want those to run pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and just refresh this. Let's see what we're at here. So here is our received invoice that's processing. Okay, so that was about five seconds, six seconds. Um, and then you can see the invoice here in where the system is reading the actual invoice and comparing it to the data within D365 and the setup on the invoice capture uh, app. So it's coming into here and it's reading some of the setups that we have here under system setups. Go back into vendor automation. And I'm just going to refresh this and we should get some errors because the invoice did not come in with a purchase order and it is a PO vendor. So we went ahead and told it ahead of time that all the invoices that come in from this vendor need to have a PO number on it. And because of that, we got some errors back or we're going to get errors back. In a moment, you will see some errors here. Oh, we have 11 errors that came through, which is good. I'm going to close this picture for the remaining of the demonstration. And that is because I want you to be able to see everything on the screen. All right. So this is where when we come in, we see the 11 errors. And if we scroll down, we can quickly see what we're missing here. We're missing a purchase order. We also have an address. Um, an error that tells us that more than likely this, this address is incomplete. It doesn't match the address within D365. I like that. Um, in addition, you can see it can't identify the lines that came over from the invoice because there's no purchase order. Now, at this point, would you think that AP should do some investigating to find out who what, what PO this is? Not necessarily. It really needs to be sent over to the procurement team because they'll be able to quickly identify what purchase order number. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and assign this to someone on our procurement team, which is going to be myself for this demonstration. But here I can quickly share and add the user or a team if I'd like to send this through Teams. Now remember, because we are using a Microsoft product, we get the benefits of all the Microsoft products, uh, one of them being team. But for this example, so we could send it to a team, I'm just going to search for myself and I'm going to assign it to myself. Now, uh, this typically wouldn't happen. Um, you wouldn't have a buyer being an AP, but I'm going to play the role of a buyer here. So in this case, I want to assign it to that buyer. Now that buyer can read and write to this record. So they're going to get a notification that lets them know that they have something in their queue 
that needs to be um, addressed. When they get this, this notification, they're going to be able to come in here and open up because they've been assigned this record and quickly come here. And once they find out the purchase order, they can come here and there's going to need to be some training docs around this, um, but they would need to start the review. Excuse me, you can't enter it immediately. You need to start the review. And then they would come and put the PO number in. Now they can complete the review here. If the invoice error contains errors and can't be reviewed. All right, so let's derive and check. So it contains the errors. We did not check to make sure that the purchase order was pulled in. So we're gonna derive and check. Now, if we go look at our error box, it's zero. If we scroll down, we still have an address issue, which is fine for this example, but we no longer have line item issues. The um, invoice capture read the purchase order, and we simply now have to complete the review and transfer it to pending vendor invoice. As a buyer, I can do that as well. I'm just going to transfer the invoice. Now, what happens when the invoice is transferred is the same thing that happened on our last video. It comes here into pending vendor invoices. And then you're going to see these automations start to run. Now, what I like is these automations will work, work, will work in the background, these process automations. So your users really can go on with their um, day-to-day um, work and not really worry about these automations. They're gonna run in the background. In a moment, we're going to see the match status. So um, the automation grabbed the receipt and matched the receipt to this pending vendor invoice. And then we're going to see another automation here in a moment for this last match status. If we refresh this, we should see this last match status to be passed. So what happened is the automation updated the match status and then submitted the um, invoice into workflow. Since this has a purchase order, the workflow is set up to auto approve and to post. Should be a matter of seconds before we see this auto post. And it was just a few seconds. It is processed for payment. So it can pull into the next automated payment run if we are using the vendor payment automations. On to the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.